Welcome or welcome back to my channel and today is the first in a series of videos about one of my favorite topics which is intuition. I don't know how many videos there are going to be yet because <laughs> it could potentially be a lot but I am excited to share this topic with you because human design is really strong at helping to reveal the different types of intuition that we have and virtually everyone that I talk to who comes to me for a reading, we talk about intuition. We talk about the aspects of intuition that they have defined in their chart, which means they have ready, reliable, ongoing access to those energies when they are open to them, right? But they don't, a lot of times don't know what they are or they don't trust them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dive into this. I know a lot of you are interested in this topic. I get questions about it a lot. So I'm happy to share some of this information with you. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing here is what is intuition? <laughs> So the simple uh, dictionary definition of intuition is any form of knowing that is not rational, reasonable, um, or analytical. Okay, so it's basically any way of knowing that's not left brained energy. Okay, which is pretty vague, really, when you think about it. Fortunately, we're living in a time where there's a lot more uh, education and a lot more understanding about intuition and different kinds of intuition. There's schools that teach intuition now. Uh, and that certainly was not the case when I was a young person. So I'm really delighted that that's what's happening in our historical moment. But I would say that intuition is any way that you interface the you that you know as you, okay, your kind of personality self interfaces with the creative intelligence of the universe, whether you want to call that the divine or spirit or the flow of life or God, goddess, all that is, right? It's the way that kind of us in our human form and in our human lives are able to connect with this greater power right? That has perspectives that are incredibly different than the ones that we have in our human experience. Now, depending on what wisdom tradition you're a part of, there are perhaps many different layers or many different dimensions where we can have like our inner being, we can have a soul self, we can have a monad, <laughs> like you can have many, we can have an over soul, okay? There's many different layers uh, of our kind of non-physical part of us, okay? And this is part of the connection that we have to the creative intelligence of the universe. I'm not going to go into a deep dive uh, unpacking all of those different layers or different dimensions of who we are as a spirit. But I do want to just mention them because I think that, you know, depend, like I said, depending on what wisdom tradition you come out of, you may have a strong understanding of that. I often just use the term inner being, right? That we have this sense that there is a part of us or our soul self, which is much larger than our, the part of us that is embodied here in this human form. And it is connected through potentially many layers to that creative intelligence or to spirit right? But we are, we interface with it. And this is what intuition is, in my view. So intuition includes, for example, imagination, right? Because what is imagination, but a way that we start to bring in different ideas, we start to create possibilities, right? And what part of us do we do that with? Well, we do it with our right brain for one thing, right? But that's going to be a form of intuition according to this definition. So why is intuition so important? This is a major form or there are many major forms of knowing, of understanding, of engaging with life uh, that are our birthright. They are our birthright. We are all born with intuition. We are all born with the capacity to connect with that, you know, with our inner being, with that creative intelligence of the universe. And yet, for most of us, we were conditioned away from it. Uh, we were conditioned, you know, in a different direction. And so we lost our connection with it. I know I did as a kid. You know, as a kid, I was conditioned away from my intuition. My intuition actually made some of the adults around me 
mm-hmm. uncomfortable. <laughs> but I was really good at math. And they thought being really good at math was awesome. So what did I do? I got really good at math, right? And this is what happens to a lot of us is, is that our culture tells us uh, what's important, uh, what's valuable, what will help us be happy and uh, successful. And so, you know, as youngers, we don't really know any better. So often we follow the path that we are presented. And that certainly was the case with me and highly developed my left brain. And uh, most people I talk to have followed that path as well. But unfortunately, and I'll get more into this in a moment, you know, that cuts off so many different intelligences that we have, so many different faculties that we have. And these intelligences are important because they do connect us with that creative, you know, intelligence, the flow of life, right? And so we are able to tap into perspectives, points of view, potentials, possibilities that we don't necessarily see around us in ordinary reality. And that is a huge benefit that we can get from opening up our intuition is is that we can connect with that divine source energy that has a lot to say to us, right? And my experience is, is that a lot of times actually our intuition, when we can clear out all the different things that are in the way, then our intuition is actually a lot more accurate than logic, region, reason, and analysis, and strategy. As important as they are, they have their place, but actually intuition is often more accurate. Why? Because it taps us into this larger perspective, whereas that logical, rational, reasonable, analytical, strategic uh, left brain is not so connected, actually. It's not. It's much more of a human faculty. Whereas our right vein, and you'll find out other parts in the chart, uh, are actually very connected to a larger intelligence. And because it's more accurate, what I have discovered is a lot of times, especially when I teach people how to open up their intuition, it's a huge relief. It's a huge relief. I mean, think about it for yourself. Do you ever get worn out trying to figure things out? I hear that from people all the time, that they're just worn out trying to figure things out. They're just like, they've got data and different points of view and different things going on up here. And they can't even sort through it all to come up with a conclusion or decision that they feel really strong behind. They feel really good uh, behind. A lot of times, even when people do make a decision logically, strategically, they then second guess themselves and undermine themselves. I hear this all the time. So when you can really tap into your intuition and you can learn to trust it and uh, it's a huge relief because you do not have to make your brain hurt by trying to figure things out so much. So why if we're all born with intuition and it's our birthright, uh, why do so few of us actually trust it? Why do so few of us use it in daily life as really the ally that it truly is? Why is it blocked, right? I think the number one thing really does have to do with this left brain dominance. Because as I said, you know, we're generally always taught to privilege that left brain capacity, right? Think about it when we're little kids, we go to school and unless you're like in a Waldorf school or something like that, uh, that honors the mythical, the imaginal world, you know, the, the fairies and the gnomes and all of that, right? If, unless you go to that, you know, the first thing that you're given is you're, le- you learn how to do, um, days of the week on a calendar. You learn your letters. You learn your numbers, right? All of that is left brain stuff. It, none of that's right brain. Okay, you're looking at squiggles on a chalkboard or on a piece of paper, and you're supposed to assign a meaning to it. It's like, oh, this symbol is A or A, depending on (laughs) like the situation, right? That's very abstract. It's very left brain. So you get it from when you're the littlest kid. But then, you know, as you go along, I mean, you have to study math, you have to do critical thinking, you have to learn how to do analysis, right? And then connected to that often is scientific dominance. And when I say scientific, I mean, Western science, I'm not talking, there's other forms of science in different parts of the world. You know, Chinese medicine is a science, for example, Ayurvedic medicine 
is a science. You know, yogic wisdom tradition is a science, but they're all very different than Western science, which is very left brain dominant. So these two things very much go together. Um, where people will say, well, you know, how are we going to know for sure? Let's check the science. As if science did not have a bias, as if there was no perspective in science or to the people who are doing science, which is absolutely not true. <laughs> if you talk to anybody who actually does science, they'll say that, right? But it's the way in popular culture that science and um, left brain um, uh, ways of knowing get trotted out as if they were value free, as if they had no perspective, as if they had no bias. It's just completely not true. <laughs> so for one thing that happens when you get this really strong left brain bias is, is that you also tend to dissociate from the body, right? You tend to start living up here. So one of the ways that we're taught is to live up here and just to use this thinking brain that we have and then to act as if the thinking brain is the part of us that should be in charge. Now, one of the things we always say in human design is never make decisions with your mind. So <laughs> you don't want that part in charge, but also in, you know, spiritual traditions all over the world, we know that there is a spiritual part of us, right? An energetic part of us that is connected to whatever concept we consider to be the all that is, right? And that that power is far greater than the mind, right? And you've probably heard this statement which is the time the mind makes a wonderful servant and a terrible master. And yet when we're really in this left brain stuff, we're, we're acting as if this part is almost all we have, but definitely the dominant, most important part that we give priority to, which when you look at the whole self is just inaccurate right? But a lot of times, especially in the places where we have a lot of technology, we're looking at screens a lot, we're on phones a lot or whatever, you know, we get very dissociated from the body. And yet the body, and this is one of the things human design shows us, is a vital form of, of knowing is our body wisdom. So all of these things can get in the way, right? Being dissociated, privileging the left brain, believing that, you know, the, the, the kind of structures of knowledge that we have inherited are the most important and the most accurate, which actually isn't true. Now, let me just say before I go on that I'm not saying that there's no value in left brain ways of knowing. There absolutely is, right? There's incredible things that can be done with left brain knowing. All I'm saying is, is that it is not the only way or maybe not even the best way. Okay, so follow along here with me for a minute. I'm going to take you through a little walkthrough of human design that says this is kind of an overview because this is an introduction to this series to talk to you about all of the different places, not even all, but a bunch of the places in human design where we get to see uh, intuition. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is the right brain. Okay, so the right brain uh, is here. It crosses over, goes over the left hand side of the body up through the central channel. That's called the sensing circuit in human design. We also have a logic circuit or understanding circuit or pattern circuit, depending on what name you want to use it for. It starts in the left, comes over here, right side of the body, and it comes up through the central channel. So we actually have two different ones that that work through the body and they mirror each other. And this makes a lot of sense, right? Because we have right brain and we have left brain energy. Um, but we tend to discount that right brain energy. Well, right, what is right brain energy, right? It's spatial, right? It tends to really be able to connect into space, which is a spiritual, right? It's how we're connecting into the energetic realm. It's creative. Uh, you know, this is where the imagination is in human design is in the sensing circuit. So we have imagination there. Um, and we also have embodiment. Okay. Um, being in the physical body, enjoying, loving the physical body. Also, uh, having wisdom and knowledge, understanding coming through the body. So like the kind of felt sense, like I have a very strong felt sense, right? I can be in an environment and get a really strong hit through my body, through my felt sense. 
about what the energy or kind of what's going on in that situation. It's also experiential. We learn and come to understand things and to know things through experience. So one of the things that Abraham Hicks says, which I think is really right on, which is, is that, you know, words don't teach. Life experience is what does that, right? Words do not teach. Life experience is what does that. And I would also say, logic, reason, analysis, and strategy isn't what teaches, right? It gives us information, but what really teaches us is life experience. So that's all right brain energy. There's a really great resource if you want to really look at this left brain, right brain thing um, called Whole Brain Living by Jill Bolte Taylor, who is a uh, neuroanatomist. So she looks at the anatomy of the brain and it's a really incredible book that I would suggest that you go and check out. Okay, so that's the sensing circuit. There's a lot to be said in the sensing circuit. But then there's the knowing circuit. Well, the knowing circuit, okay. So we know about left brain energy. We know about right brain energy, okay. But the knowing circuit, as far as I can tell, is only something that's in human design. I've never heard about it in any other system before, and it's phenomenal. It's the biggest of all of the sub circuits. It's huge. It comes down here through the head, splits, go out on both sides of the body, and then comes up through the central channel. So it's like the size of the left brain and the right brain energy put together, right? It's huge. And the knowing circuit is uh, where you just know things. Okay. It's an energy just for, you know, getting a hit about something. It's totally what we think of as intuition. It's also where we get downloads, right? We get epiphanies, we get insights, we get out of the box ideas, really, really leading edge things come in because it's individual circuitry. And that, those are the characteristics of individual circuitry. And the knowing circuit is the largest sub circuit um, of all of the circuits. Uh, and it is so it brings us a lot of different nuance for this form of intuition. You can see here, there's just a lot of channels and a lot of gates. It's a big part of the design, right? And just remember, no, even if you don't have a lot of it colored in in your chart, you still have all of that knowing circuit and you will have experienced all of it uh, throughout your life many, many times. It's true with every single piece of the human design chart. Knowing circuit is super cool. And it's really, I think of it as the place where the evolutionary impulse for humanity is, is coming in and, and it's coming in from super consciousness, from that creative intelligence. Okay. Uh, and it's not rational. It's not reasonable. It's not logical. You can't replicate it. You can't test it. It's none of those things, right? It's really not. And so when we discard what we get through our knowing circuit, we basically are kind of cutting ourselves off at the knees and um, and really, you know, impoverishing ourselves very, very deeply. Then there's strategy and authority. And there's a bunch of different ones. I'm not going to go into all of them in detail, but there's strategy and authority. So strategy is how each type is designed to basically engage in life. Okay. And the authority is how we're designed to make decisions. All of this is non-rational, non-reasonable, not logical. It's not left-brained at all. And so at the, these core elements of the human design system are intuitive. So inside of that, there is the sacral center. So all generators, pure generators, manifesting generators, all have a defined sacral, which is that red square down towards the bottom of the chart. It's the center for life force energy. And it's a responsive energy. And so for 70% of the population, which is all the generators, right? This sacral is our hu a huge form of intuition for us because it's a very sensitive energy. It's responsive. It responds to what's happening in our outer reality. It's partly how we engage with and dance with the flow of life. But then it also helps us to make decisions. It gives us a mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or a mm-mm when we're asking yes, no questions. And so there is an art to understanding response and also uh, the, the sacral center. And I do have a number of different videos that go into detail about that. So if you want to go find out more about that right now, you know, go check that out. But it is a huge form of intuition that 70% of us have. Then there's the spleen center, which is the center for instinct and intuition, the immune system and right timing. Um, and so I know for me, even though I am a generator, 
uh, in my printout from Jovian, it says that my authority is splenic, right? Because I have the defined spleen. I actually use my sacral center more, but I do know that I do get intuition from my spleen and from the gates that come through, the knowing circuit gates that come through the spleen. Uh, and that the challenge with the spleen is, is that because it's based in instinct, it also has a variety of fears that are associated with it. And so when those fears are activated, uh, then it's very hard to tap into your intuition. So when I see people who have a lot of definition in their spleen and the gates of the spleen, I always point out to them, like you can see here in this image, the different fears of the spleen. Um, because very often, I would say 99% of the time, when somebody has a lot of those defined and I say, oh, you know, do you have fear of the future? Or do you have fear of the past? Or like, oh, how did you know? Or do you have fear of getting it wrong or fear of not knowing enough? Right. And so when those fears, which are really instinctual fears that are designed to keep you safe, but are usually not very relevant for your life today, real time. Um, but when they're active, they get in the way and you can't really hear your intuition. So that's one of the reasons that I love the sacral center because it doesn't operate that same way. So I do use my splenic energy for sure. Uh, but then I use that sacral really to, to make my decisions. Then of course, there's for those of you who have a um, motor to the throat. So that would be manifestors and manifesting generators. There are creative impulses that come from the four different motors going to the throat that are, that's that manifesting energy for manifestors and manifesting generators. And they're what about 45, 40 to 45% of the population. So that's a lot of people, right? And so that's a form of intuition too, is where you're getting these kind of internal pulses that say, oh, go do this now, go do that now. Now for manifesting generators, they also need to work with their strategy, which is to respond. And they want to work with their sacral, whereas manifestors can kind of move forward on those creative impulses, ideally after they've told people in their impact field that, you know, that they're going to do that. But, um, but those creative impulses are, are, are really strong. Then the last one I want to mention here, and as I said, there's, there's more, but are, is really the openness in the chart, but particularly the open centers, because the open centers can become very uh, uh, sensitive, right? And they can be picking up on energy that's happening around them. And that can be a form of intuition when you know how to handle the openness of your centers. In traditional human design, your openness really gets a bad rap. Like, you know, you're just being, you're the subjected to other people's energy and your openness. And it's the places where you're going to get thrown around. If you have a lot of openness, you're probably heavily conditioned. <laughs> it's really negative. Whereas I love my openness. I have five open centers. And yes, I did need to learn how to work with that energy, which human design showed me how to do. I didn't really know how to do that before. So yeah, I think when you don't know human design, the openness can be challenging because you don't really know what's going on. But once you understand human design, you get in touch with it, then uh, it can show you how to work with your openness. And like, so example, I have an open emotional solar plexus. I think that that is a huge asset for me working with clients because I can kind of feel that's what's going on for them um, emotionally right? I have a sensitivity to that because I'll pick it up and amplify it. I can kind of feel it or as the reflectors say, I taste it, right? So for you, your open centers can become a real source of intuition when you learn how to manage them and, and really use that energy. And the last piece that I want to share with you here in this introduction is just some tips about how to open your intuition. I'll be going into this a lot more as we go through this different series, but just a few tips here. Well, obviously the first one is discover your human design, right? Discover your human design. And I just mentioned a, a bunch of different aspects of human design that you want to find out about your, for yourself. 
Number one, you want to practice your strategy and your authority. So your strategy by type and then whatever your authority is. That's the baseline where you want to start. And I want to just say here that I'm going to be doing as I'm opening up my membership site, which will be happening soon. Uh, I'm going to be doing some work on uh, sacral skills. And so you'll get invited to that soon so that you can really practice and get feedback and so on. So that's one thing though, is really get in touch with your, uh, your strategy and your authority and practice, 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 because they are intuitive allies for you that will protect you from making bad decisions, um, and from burning yourself out, all kinds of different things. So then also engage in right-brained activities. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, creativity is so nice, you know, oh, the arts, it's so beautiful, but it's not serious, right? I mean, you can see this in where money goes in education these days, right? We're always talking about how we have to get our kids to learn more math and they have to be coding at an early age. And, you know, it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, if there's time for art, maybe they could have like an hour to do art on Fridays or something when they're tired, right? I mean, it's, it's really imbalanced in education. And so you may have already embedded in you this idea that the right brain stuff is just not that serious. It's not that important. Why do I need to do that? But I'll tell you when I really started to learn how to paint, for example, this is one of mine. Um, it changed my life dramatically because it opened up my right brain and it opened up my perception of the world in such a different way. Also, meditation can open up your right brain brain capacities. Uh, I do a lot of writing. I like to do stuff with images, um, you know, singing, dancing, anything expressive, playing an instrument, just like doing something, especially if it's embodied, right? And if there's sound involved, it can get you out of that left brain dominance and start opening up this whole other capacity. I know before um, the pandemic, you know, I danced like two to three days a week. And that was one of the ways that I really dropped into my right brain energy and got very embodied and got highly intuitive so that in a group of people who are used to dancing with each other, we could fly around a room and we would not run into each other because our intuition got so highly uh, developed um, in that, that environment. So engage in some right brain activities. Practice embodiment, however you do that. You know, I mean, it just, you can even just do that through exercise, but just find a way to get out of this thinking tower and come down into your brain, uh, your, into your body. I always suggest doing long, deep breaths, right? Or breath of fire, something that really activates your breathing, clarity breath work. I have different supports for all of those, uh, which will be available inside of my, my membership site soon. So practice embodiment in some way, but if you like to run or you like to ride a bike or, you know, you like to do some kind of sports, um, or you like to dance or, you know, really yoga, any of those things will help you get down in your body. And when you're doing that, you want to see if you can get your perception to be paying attention to your body rather than the thoughts that are probably still going on. But how can you start to perceive yourself from the inside? And then go outside, you know, and if you can take your shoes off and be barefoot. I know it's starting to get cold in the northern climates right now, but for those of you in the southern realms, it's a good time for you to be doing that. I live in California and, and I can still go out and take my shoes off and walk around. And I've been doing that every week, gardening with my shoes off. And it's been amazing. It feels so good. And it gets me out of this thinking tower and helps me connect to the flow of life, to that creative intelligence, which of course is very alive in the non-human world, right? I mean, all of that creative intelligence is, is here creating, you know, many, many different forms, right? Of, of plants and trees and animals and insects and birds and, you know, all kinds of things, right? And so when you go outside and especially if you can get your feet on the, on the soil, right? Then you can start to open up your perception and again, get out of that thinking tower. And then the last thing is I would just say is get off your devices, you know, like get off your phone, get off your iPad, get off your computer for a while. Just, just get off you know, go do something else. Like if you go outside to walk outside, don't take your phone with you and be on your phone. 
Um, I'm also a big advocate for, you know, writing, right? I mean, and writing with writing with a pen, you know, not just writing on a device. There's something really different when you write with a pen on paper. Um, yeah, and I always use recycled paper. So there's that. But you know, there's something really different than, than when you do that, you know, go sing, you know, just go and sing with the birds, just get off your devices because that that just stimulates this brain so much plus we're sedentary we're just sitting there right when we're on our devices right i mean every once in a while you might have you know your phone with you and you're running or something and you're listening to some music and you know i do that sometimes too and it is better to be off the screen right but if you can get off your device altogether for some period of time it will help to open up your intuition Okay, that's my video for today. This is the beginning of a series. Please do leave a comment for me down below that lets me know, well, how is your connection to your intuition? What do you feel like might be in the way? What do you think could, could help you to open up your intuition if you have any idea? What have you been frustrated with about your intuition, right? Have you had any breakthroughs? You know, do you have any ahas that you could share with us? Because that always inspires everybody, okay? And then make sure to, um, to stay tuned for the rest of these. And then also, if you haven't had a chance yet, go ahead and get Getting Started with Human Design, which is a free ebook that I have. And it also has a reflection journal. And that way you'll be in, uh, you know, you'll be on my email list and you'll find out when my membership site opens. And I'm going to have some free events in there. I'm going to have some free courses. I'm going to have some courses that you can invest in when you want to go for a deeper dive. You'll get to start communicating communicating with each other. I feel like we've got a really nice group of people here, subscribers on my channel. We're almost up to 3000. I'm going to do a chartathon uh, to celebrate those 3000 uh, when we get there. And so I want to start giving you all a chance to connect with each other too. Uh, and for me to connect with you as well. Okay, so go ahead, uh, get the ebooks and, um, and then, you know, stay tuned. Many blessings, much love. Bye for now.